Hi everyone, it's Professor Primson. In this video, we're going to talk about addition and subtraction formulas. So in this video, we're going to talk about the sum and difference formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent functions, and then we're going to use the sum and difference formulas to verify identities. So the addition and subtraction formulas. We're going to begin by discussing the identities for trigonometric functions for the sums and differences of angles. So the theorem, the addition and subtraction formulas, the addition and subtraction formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are as follows. Sine of the quantity s plus t is equal to sine of one of the values s times cosine of the other value t plus cosine of the first value s times sine of the second value t. And then if you have a difference, sine of s subtract t is equal to sine of the first s times cosine of the second t subtract cosine of the first s times sine of the second t. So notice how the sine function works for the sum and difference formulas. You have sine of a sum or sine of a difference. The sine between the two terms is the same for a sum or the difference. And notice also that a sine of a sum or sine of the difference is sine of the first value, cosine of the second, sine of the first, cosine of the second, and then the second term is cosine of the first, sine of the second, cosine of the first, sine of the second. So they're consistent. The sum formula for cosine would be this. Cosine of s plus t is cosine of s, the first, cosine of t, the second, minus sine of the first, s, and sine of the second, t. And cosine of a difference, s attract t, is cosine of s, cosine of the second, t, plus sine of the first, s, and sine of the second, t. So notice how the addition and subtraction formulas work for the cosine function. You have cosine of the first, which is s, and cosine of the second term, which is t, and then you also have sine of the first, s, and sine of the second, t, but notice if you have cosine of a sum, it actually is a difference of those two terms in the formula. And also cosine of a difference, it's cosine of the first, cosine of the second, but then it's a plus sine of the first and sine of the second. So notice if you have a difference for the cosine function, it's actually a plus between the two terms. So it's cosine, cosine, and then sine, sine, but then you also have the opposite sine. If you have a sum, it's a difference of the two terms. If it's a difference, it's actually a sum of the two terms. And then tangent of a sum, tangent of s plus t is equal to tangent of s plus tangent of t divided by the quantity 1 subtract tangent of s times tangent of t. Or the difference for the tangent function, tangent of s subtract t is tangent of s subtract tangent of t, and then also divide by 1 plus tangent of s times tangent of t. So notice that there's consistent formula for, for the sum and difference formulas for the tangent function as well. Notice for the sum formula for the tangent function, you have a sum in the numerator, and there's a difference of the two terms in the denominator. However, if you have a difference for the tangent function, it's the difference in the numerator and a sum in the denominator. So now that we know the addition and subtraction formulas, we're going to now determine the exact value for the basic trigonometric functions from angles that we were previously unknown to us with terminal points on the unit circle. So example one, using the addition and subtraction formulas, find the exact value for the following trigonometric expressions. So number one, we're going to find out the value of sine of the quantity, pi divided by three, subtract pi divided by four. So if you simplify what's inside the parentheses of the sine function, its argument, pi divided by three, subtract pi divided by four, is actually pi divided by 12. So we're going to find out what is the exact value for sine of pi over 12. Well, using the difference formula for the sine function, it's sine of a difference, it's sine of the first value, times cosine of the second, and then subtract cosine of the first, times sine of the second. Well, that would be sine of pi over three times cosine of pi over four, then subtract cosine of pi over three times sine of pi over four. So now we can simplify these values for the sine of pi over three, cosine of pi over three, sine of pi over four, and cosine of pi over four using the unit circle. So sine of pi over three is equal to square root three divided by two. Cosine of pi over four is equal to square root two divided by two. Cosine of pi over three is square root two divided by two. Cosine of pi over three is equal to one half, and sine of pi over four is square root two divided by two. And remember, you have a subtraction between the two terms. So if you simplify, you'll have square root three times square root two, that's square root six. Two times two in the denominator, that's four. And the second two factors multiplied together, square root two times one gives you square root two, and two times two gives you four. So notice you have these two fractions have a common denominator of four, you can actually make it one fraction with the LCD of four. And so in the numerator, you'll have square root six, subtract square root two, and the denominator is the LCD, which is four. And so this is the exact value for sine of pi over three, subtract pi over four, or in other words, it's the value of sine of pi divided by 12. So let's try another one. Number two, 
cosine of 75 degrees. So notice you can rewrite 75 degrees as a sum of two different angles that we know from the unit circle. It's the sum of 30 degrees and 45 degrees to get you 75 degrees. So we're talking about the sum or the addition formula for the cosine function this time. So it would be cosine of the first angle, 30 degrees, times cosine of the second angle, which is 45 degrees, subtract because the addition formula for the cosine function added a subtraction between the two terms, sine of the first angle, so sine of 30 degrees, times sine of the second angle, 45 degrees. So you have cosine of 30 degrees, times cosine of 45 degrees, subtract sine of 30 degrees times sine of 45 degrees. So each of these values can be obtained from the unit circle. So cosine of 30 degrees is square root 3 divided by 2, cosine of 45 degrees is square root 2 divided by 2, sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, and sine of 45 degrees is square root 2 divided by 2. And so again, if we simplify, you'll have square root 3 times square root 2, that's square root 6, and the denominator is 2 times 2 gives you 4, and the second two factors, 1 times square root 2 gives you square root 2, and the denominator is 2 times 2 gives you 4, and so the exact value for cosine of 75 degrees is squirt 6, subtract squirt 2, all divided by 4, which is the LCD in this case. So you can make it one fraction. So let's try number 3. This time we have cosine of 5 pi divided by 4, subtract pi divided by 6. So notice this time we're going to have to use the difference formula for the cosine function, which says you take cosine of the first value, so cosine of 5 pi divided by 4, times cosine of the second value, which is pi over 6, so cosine of pi over 6, and then you have plus between the two terms this time because that's the difference formula for the cosine function, sine of the first value, so sine of 5 pi divided by 4, times sine of the second value, so sine of pi divided by 6. And so again, we can obtain these values from the unit circle. Cosine of 5 pi divided by 4 is negative square root 2 divided by 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root 3 divided by 2. Plus sine of 5 pi divided by 4 is negative square root 2 divided by 2. And sine of pi divided by 6 is 1 half. So if you simplify, you'll have square root 3 times negative square root 2, that's negative square root 6, and then the denominators are 2 times 2, which will give you 4, and the second two factors, 1 times negative square root 2 will give you negative square root 2, and then 2 times 2 gives you 4. And so you can make this one fraction because you have an LCD of 4, and so that will be negative square root 6, subtract square root 2, all divided by 4, that's the value, the exact value, of cosine of 5 pi divided by 4, subtract pi divided by 6. So let's try a couple more. Number four, sine of 7 pi divided by 12. Well, 7 pi divided by 12, you can actually rewrite using the sum of two different angles from the unit circle. It's pi divided by 3 plus pi divided by 4. Pi over 3 plus pi over 4, if you simplify using the common denominator, the common denominator is 12, and if you simplify, you actually have 7 pi divided by 12 after you make it one fraction. So we have sine of pi divided by 3 plus pi over 4. That is sine of 7 pi over 12. So it looks like we're going to use the addition formula for the sine function this time. So we have sine of the first value, sine of pi over 3, times cosine of the second value, which is cosine of pi over 4, plus, because we're using the addition formula for sine, so it would be sine of the second value, sine of pi over 4, times cosine of the first value, which was cosine of pi over 3. And so each of these values can be obtained from the unit circle as well. Sine of pi divided by 3 is square root 3 divided by 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root 2 divided by 2. Sine of pi over 4 is again square root 2 divided by 2. And cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And so if you simplify, you'll have square root 6 divided by 4 for the first two factors multiplied together. And the second two factors multiplied together, you will get square root 2 divided by 4. And so you can make this one fraction again by making it square root 6 plus square root 2 all divided by 4. That's the exact value for sine of 7 pi divided by 12. So number 5, notice what we already have. We already have it written out using the difference formula for the cosine function. So you have cosine of 40 degrees times cosine of 80 degrees. Subtract sine of 40 degrees, sine of 80 degrees. Well, notice you have a cosine and a cosine and a sine times sine, and there's a difference between the two different terms. So this is the addition formula for the cosine function. So this will be cosine of one value, 40 degrees, and also the other values, 80 degrees. So it's the sum of 40 degrees and 80 degrees as the argument of the cosine function. So it's cosine of 120 degrees, which we know is negative one half. And so that is the value of cosine of 40 degrees times cosine of 80 degrees, subtract so sine of 40 degrees times sine of 80 degrees. So let's try a different example. Example two, evaluating an expression with trigonometric functions. Given the following information, evaluate the following trigonometric expressions using the addition and subtraction formulas. So we have sine of theta is four fifths, where theta is actually between pi divided by two and pi. So that means that theta is actually in quadrant two. And we also have sine of phi is negative two divided by square root five. And so we have phi is between pi and three pi divided by two. So the angle phi is actually in quadrant three. So this information is given to us in the problem. We want to answer these problems. Number one, cosine of theta. Well, cosine of theta we don't actually have given in the problem. 
we have the sine of theta is 4 fifths, and we have that theta is actually in quadrant 2, between pi divided by 2 and pi radians. However, if you remember, we can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1, and if we solve for cosine of theta, we actually can find out the value. So cosine squared of theta, if you subtract sine squared to the right side of the equation, you'll have cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 subtract sine squared of theta, and if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, you have cosine of theta by itself now is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 subtract sine squared of theta inside the square root. And now notice, if we know that theta is actually in quadrant 2, the cosine function of theta is actually a negative value. So cosine of theta will be the opposite, or negative, square root 1 subtract sine squared of theta. And so we know what the value of sine of theta is, it was 4 fifths. So we can replace sine of theta as 4 fifths inside the square root. So cosine of theta will be negative square root 1 subtract 4 fifths, and the 4 fifths is being squared because sine was being squared inside the square root. And so we have negative square root 1 subtract 4 squared divided by 5 squared, which will be 16 divided by 25. So 1 subtract 16 divided by 25 inside the square root. And so cosine of theta is negative square root 1 minus 16 20 fifths is actually 9 20 fifths. So you have negative square root 9 20 fifths. And if you take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately, you'll have negative 3 fifths. So cosine of theta is negative 3 fifths. Number two, let's find out the value of cosine of phi. So again, we are given the value of sine of phi, and phi is actually in quadrant three. However, we don't know the value of cosine of phi, but we can use the Pythagorean identity to actually find out the value again, just like we did in the last problem. So sine squared of phi plus cosine squared of phi is equal to one. Well, we want to find out what the value of cosine of phi is, so get cosine squared by itself. Cosine squared of phi is one subtract sine squared of phi after you subtract to the right side of the equation. And so if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, cosine of phi is plus or minus square root one subtract sine squared of phi. However, we know that phi is actually in quadrant three and cosine of phi is negative if phi is actually in quadrant three. And so we'll have cosine of phi is negative or the opposite of square root one subtract sine squared of phi. And we know that sine of phi was given to us as negative two divided by square root five. So we can make that replacement inside the square root for the sine of phi. So cosine of phi is negative square root one subtract the quantity, negative two divided by square root five all squared. And if you take negative two divided by square root five and you square it, you'll have four divided by five. And so inside the square root, you'll have one subtract four fifths, which is one fifth. And then don't forget about the negative on the outside of the square root. So it's negative square root one fifth. And then you can take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately. It'll be negative square root one, which is one divided by square root of five. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root five divided by square root five, you'll have negative square root five divided by five. So that's the value of cosine of phi, where phi is actually in quadrant three. And the sine of phi was negative two divided by square root five. So now number three, we're gonna find out the value of sine of theta plus phi. So we have the sum of two different angles here, theta and phi. So you might be wondering, why do we find out cosine of theta and cosine of phi when we were told sine of theta and sine of phi? Well, now we can find out the value of sine of a sum of two different angles using the addition formula for the sine function. So sine of theta plus phi is sine of theta times cosine of phi plus cosine of theta times sine of phi. So that means that sine of theta plus phi is equal to sine of theta was given to us in the problem. That was four fifths times cosine of phi. We just found out that was negative square root five divided by five plus cosine of theta. We found out from the first problem, it was negative three fifths. And then sine of phi was given to us as negative two divided by square root five. And so now we just need to simplify this value to find out the exact value. So four times negative square root five is negative four square root five. And then the denominators are five times five gives us 25. But then the last two factors multiplied together, negative three times negative two gives you positive six. And the denominator five times square root five is five square root five. So the first term is already okay. It already has 25 in the denominator. However, this second term, you need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root five divided by square root five, which will give you six times square root five in the numerator and five square root five times square root five will be five times five, which will give you 25. And so now you can make up one fraction because you have an LCD of 25 in the denominator. And so negative four square root five plus six square root five is two square root five, and the denominator, the LCD, was 25. So it stays the same. So this is the exact value of sine of theta plus phi. It's two square root five divided by 25. So let's try another problem that's similar. Example three, evaluating an expression with trigonometric functions. Given the following information, evaluate the following trigonometric expressions using the addition and subtraction formulas. This time, tangent of phi is given to us as negative three-fourths, and phi is in quadrant two. 
and sine of theta is negative 12 thirteenths, and the angle theta is in quadrant 3. So number 1, find out the value of cosine of theta. So again, we have the value of sine of theta, and we know that theta is in quadrant 3. We can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1, so we can find out cosine of theta's value. So let's try to get cosine squared of theta by itself. So subtract sine squared of theta on the right side of the equation. So cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 subtract sine squared of theta. And now you want to get cosine of theta by itself. So take the square root on both sides of the equation. That'll cancel out the square power on the cosine function. And then cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus square root 1 subtract sine squared of theta. Well, we know that theta is in quadrant 3. The cosine function is negative if the angle's in quadrant 3. And so that means cosine of theta is negative or the opposite of square root 1 subtract sine squared of theta. Since we know the value of sine of theta, it was given to us as negative 12 thirteenths, we actually can replace sine of theta with, with negative 12 thirteenths inside the square root. And so cosine of theta will be negative square root, one subtract sine of theta was negative 12 thirteenths, so it will be negative 12 thirteenths, and that's all squared. And so inside the square root, you'll have one subtract 144 divided by 169, because you'll have negative 12 squared, that's 144, and 13 squared is 169. And so inside the square root, 1 subtract 144 divided by 169 will give you 25 divided by 169 after you get common denominators of 169. And so you have the negative on the outside of the square root. You have 25 divided by 169. And now you can take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately. And so it will be negative. Square root 25 gives you 5 in the numerator. And the square root of 169 is 13. And so cosine of theta is the value negative 5 thirteenths. Number two, let's find out the value of sine of phi. So this time we are given the tangent function of phi, it's negative three-fourths. Well, let's find out the value of the secant function from the tangent function using the Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared of phi plus one is equal to secant squared of phi. And so notice that you have secant squared of phi already by itself. So you can take secant squared of phi, it's one plus tangent squared of phi, which is the other side of the equation. Take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power on the secant of phi. And so secant of phi is plus or minus square root one plus tangent squared of the angle phi. So now notice, if phi is actually in quadrant two, that means the cosine function is negative for that angle. And that means that the secant function is also negative for the angle phi. So secant of the angle phi is negative square root one plus tangent squared of the angle phi. So we can find out the value of secant of phi because we were told the value of tangent of phi was negative three fourths. So we'll have secant of phi is negative square root one plus tangent of phi squared. So that will be negative three fourths in parentheses squared. And so inside the square root, you'll have one plus negative three squared gives you nine and four squared will give you 16. And so inside the square root, you'll have 1 plus 9 sixteenths, which is after you get a common denominator, will be 25 divided by 16. And so with the negative on the outside of the square root, you'll have negative square root 25 in the numerator, that's 5, so negative 5 in the numerator, and then square root 16 will give you 4. So secant of phi is negative 5 fourths. However, we're trying to find the value of sine of phi. Well, we need to find out what is cosine of phi first. Cosine of phi is the reciprocal of the secant function. So cosine of phi will be negative 4 fifths because secant of phi was negative 5 fourths. And so now we have the tangent function and we have the cosine function's values at the angle phi. Tangent of phi was given to us as negative 3 fourths, and we know that tangent of phi is sine of phi divided by cosine of phi. And we want to find out sine of phi, that's the numerator. Cosine of phi, we just found out, was negative 4 fifths, so that's the denominator. So you can multiply both sides of the equation by negative 4 fifths, which means you take negative 3 fourths times negative 4 fifths, and you'll have sine of phi by itself. So sine of phi is negative 3 fourths times negative 4 fifths, which will be positive 12 twentieths, and that will reduce or simplify, so that gives you sine of phi is equal to the value 3 fifths. Now let's try one more. Number three, we want to find out the value of cosine of theta subtract phi. So this is a difference formula for the cosine function. So the difference formula for the cosine function said cosine of theta subtract phi would be cosine of theta times cosine of phi, then plus sine of theta times sine of phi. Well, we just found out all four different values. We found out cosine of theta from the first problem. We found out cosine of phi from the second problem. We were given the value of sine of theta, and we found out just now sine of phi from the second problem. So now we actually have all four values. So let's make all the replacements. Cosine of theta was negative 5 thirteenths. Cosine of phi was negative 4 fifths. And then plus sine of theta was given to us as negative 12 thirteenths. And sine of phi we found out was positive 3 fifths. So that means you'll have negative 5 thirteenths times negative 4 fifths. That's 20 divided by 65. And then you'll also have negative 12 times 3, that's negative 36, divided by 5 times 13, that's 65. And so 20 65ths subtract 36 65ths, 
will give you negative 16 60 fifths, and that does not simplify any further. So that's the value of cosine of theta subtract phi, it's negative 16 60 fifths as an exact value. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talked about how to use the sum and difference formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll, and I'll see you at the next video when we finish up our discussion on addition and subtraction formulas.